Hey everybody! As you can see, I've got my copies of the Divine and Play Tarot and its little baby companion deck, the Shadow Play Tarot. Um, and I'm really excited to dive into these and kind of really take a look at them firsthand. Um, for those of you who don't know, these decks are the brainchild of Matt Green, um, and they were publicized on Kickstarter. Um, I don't know why I'm so surprised with that. Kickstarter is a wonderful place to find decks. I remember it had a really modest um, initial goal, something like $5,000, give or take. Um, and the decks were actually really reasonably priced, especially for Kickstarter, where they can often be like $60, $100, whatever. Um, I remember that these were $20 for something in a tuck box and something like $35, $38 for something in a box like this. Um, and I think the reasonableness of that price definitely played a role in its popularity. Um, I think it eventually closed with something like almost $25,000 uh, that had been bid and with um, something like 750 backers, which was really successful. Um, throughout the course of that campaign, um, which was initially for the Divine and Play Tarot, uh, the creator, again, Matt Green, um, said, hey, you know, it would be kind of neat um, if I came out with some cards that matched, you'll see here, the borders of the major and the minor are different. If I came out with some minor arcana that you could like swap in if you just wanted to use it as a straight up tarot deck so that all the borders would be black. So that was the start of the shadow play deck. And then as more and more people kept bidding, he came out with a major arcana for this particular deck itself, um, which made it its own whole unique deck. Um, I was interested in these decks primarily because me and my former partner, um, have we're, we're huge card players. I mean, it's just anytime we're bored, we bust out a deck of cards and play a game of my favorite is 500 rum. Um, his is oftentimes uh, blackjack, actually. <laughs> um, blackjack is his weakness. Um, but um, yeah, so I got these because we're also both esotericists. And for years we have been um, saying how cool it would be to have a deck of cards that was a tarot deck. That you could also play um, card games with because if you've ever taken a look yeah you could totally take come on cards you could just totally take out the majors woo right and work with you know the kings um the kings work with the minors maybe taking out like the knight right or the page whichever one you want to go with personally i would have gone with taking out the page um and then just working with those but as you can see like if you're trying to you know play an actual game, you've got these fanned out in front of you, you can't actually see what cards you have, right? With the traditional deck, there's always something in this little corner here that tells you, actually, let me just pull out a traditional deck. Okay. And here's a traditional playing card deck. As you can see, when you fan them out, you know what's in your hand because you've got that little icon in the corner. So tarot cards traditionally make pretty terrible playing cards. Um, but what Matt Green has done is he's taken all the tarot cards and made them like a little thing inside, kind of how you'd have like something like this. And then he's also put like an eight of hearts or whatever in the corner, um, which has made them quite usable. So I thought that was a great idea. I knew that my partner would have adored it. So I got a copy of Divine and Play with the idea that that would be his like Christmas stocking stuff or something like that. Um, and then Shadow Play came out and I was like, hey, you know, it's only a $5 add-on, why not? <clears throat> and then my boyfriend and I broke up, so I guess I have new decks, yay. Um, so I thought it would be kind of nice to take a look at these today and kind of see how successful they are um, in terms of being playing card decks and tarot decks. So yeah, let's take a look at that. Um, First, it might not be the worst idea to take a look at packaging. Obviously, the Shadow Play deck here is just a really basic tuck box, as you can see. Nothing too crazy to write home about there. Mine did come a little bit damaged. I've got this little, like, crush in the corner, I guess. Um, but it's just a really basic, clean design, which I appreciate. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the black. I don't know if you can see it, but it is kind of like picking up oils from your hands. So it kind of gets little weird sheens and marks on it, but it's fine. It's a tuck box. Um, the Divine on Play 
if you opted for, what did they call this? A flip top box. Um, it did come in a bigger box and you open it up you get a little saying, life must be lived as play. Aw, very nice. A little guidebook. You don't get guidebooks with the tuck box ones. Um, and I have to admit, I have not gone through these to see. I think these are just coming from the key of the tarot. No, I don't think so. I'm not entirely sure no, yeah, it is. Um, the pictorial key to the tarot. Okay, so the, that's where the um, descriptions are coming from. So you don't really need this because you can get the pictorial key for free everywhere. Inside um, this was actually also a tuck box for the Divine and Play Tarot. So there's that. This is, um, it fits in really snugly into this little foam insert. So like you really can't just tug it out. When you try to take it out, the whole foam insert comes out with it, which is what it is. Um, I guess maybe if I just put the cards in here, it might not do that. Actually, let's just give that a try now. Get some cards, cards, boop. All right, do the cards come out pretty easily? Yeah, the cards themselves come out pretty easily. Uh, but when you put the tuck box on there, that gets a little tight. Um, but I, I really do like the foam insert. Um, it's nice and professionally cut. It's super clean. And I like how there's that little printing down here. You know, the card design back. Um, it's a solid little box. Is it the most amazing that I've ever seen? No, but I vastly do prefer it to the tuck box, so that's nice. Um, let's take a look at the cards. <clears throat> Wait, hang on a second. Is this up to? Oh. Oh, is that the same with the mic? Yep. No? Yep. So what I'm sitting here mumbling like an idiot about is the fact that um, it looks like the backs are printed upside down. As you can see, like here's our front orientation. When we flip it, that cup is obviously not supposed to be upside down. The heart's upside down. Yeah, you kind of see what I'm talking about there. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's not the most noticeable thing in the world, even though it's the first thing I noticed. Um, but it's not like it's a horrible thing. It would have been really nice if these were actually reversible backs, but that's that. Um, I really like this red motif that we've got on the backs. It's kind of cool. Um, fronts, what we've got here are the two decks, um, the two decks, the two arcana. And as you can see, the majors have a black border around them, um, which makes it really easy if you had these shuffled together to just quickly pull out the majors without even looking at the cards, which is kind of neat. Um, as I mentioned before, the other aspect of <clears throat> the minors is that there's an extra card in the courts compared to a playing card deck. And as you can see here, what they've done is they've made the knight with a little lowercase k to differentiate it from the king. Um, and they've printed it on a slightly different color of cardstock. Can you see how this is more of an off-white um, compared to the straight-up white? So it does stand out a little bit, um, but honestly, I think it just kind of looks sloppy. Um, I know that in the original pictures of the prototype deck, this was actually a gray card. It wasn't off-white. The background was gray, you know, a midpoint between this white and the black. Um, <clears throat> the page has obviously been changed to Jack. What I probably would have done if this had been my deck was I would have made this Jack and made this a P for Page because um, that uh, that lowercase is really annoying me. And I believe that if you look at a playing card deck, let's just pull out the playing card deck that I have. In my memory, the Jacks all have swords, which would make them essentially knights. Well, that guy doesn't have a sword. He's got what, a baton? There's another Jack. He's got, I guess this is a battle axe. He's got an axe. 
Wait, where's my other jack? I just got a club too. Well, they all have a club or something. Um, and I don't believe any of the pages actually carry any weapons. Um, so I think it could have worked out nicely for the knights to be the jack, basically. Um, what else? Oh, this is something I've kind of noticed. Um, they took a overlay of like the two of diamonds where you've got the two diamonds stacked on top of each other, the three, four, five, the traditional suit layouts, basically. Um, <clears throat> but they've made these um, a transparent white. I don't know if you can see that. See how you can see, still see Pamela Coleman Smith's art through the diamonds? Um, I'm not sure I like this. In the original prototype, these, the playing card things were actually solid white and overlaid over the Pamela Coleman Smith stuff, which meant you could actually see the playing card stuff pretty well. This one, it just, It makes the the diamonds and spades and whatnot a little bit hard to see. I do still like being able to see the Pamela Colton Smith art though. And if you are playing with these things, like obviously like this is what you're gonna see. You're not gonna see most of the art if you're actually using these to play with. For some reason the clubs actually look a little bit brighter. You can see more of the clubs than the other ones. So I guess, I guess what I'm saying is if I had been making this deck, I might have either decreased the transparency a little bit so that the, um, the hearts, the diamonds, the clubs would have been a little bit easier to see, or I just would have made them opaque. There's pros and cons to either one, or I guess could have left them off. That could have been a thing too. Um, what else do we got going here? <clears throat> the cardstock isn't bad. It's a nice, solid, um, plain card cardstock. Um, it's got a good snap to it. It's a linen, which I really like. Um, linen cardstocks for playing cards make them a lot easier to shuffle and things to that nature. Um, I am noticing, though, that it looks like this is not, uh, Pam A.B. or A.B. A.D. line art, which is my favorite for the Pamela Colin Smith stuff. This looks like C.B. Um, what is one of the cards that is really easy to tell? Oh, the sun. Let's just find the sun and see which one this actually is. Okay, so this would be Pam C. Um, the B deck doesn't have lines here in the the sun, and it's got missing seeds in the sunflower. So I guess we are working with Pam C um, line work, and that's fine. Um, it does also look like they squished the aspect ratio this way to um, to make these cards work. The magician is a little bit squatter and his face is a little bit shorter than what I know it to be. Yeah, everyone's just a little bit stouter. See how much of a square the Hierophant looks? I don't know if that was done on these. I think the aspect ratio is more maintained here. I think this is looking a little squatter than what I remember. Um, but as you can see, there's more um, card here. Um, the borders are a lot skinnier here than they are here. So that might, uh, that might account for the different aspect ratios, I suppose. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that, I gotta say. I don't like it when the aspect ratio is messed with so that I immediately notice it. Um, <clears throat> I might not have made that particular choice, so that I guess is something to be known. Um, I am also noticing that, I don't know if you can see this, some of the edges of these cards, it's a brand new deck, I literally just took it out of the box, I'm seeing some like nicks and chips in these edges, I don't know how much that's picking up on camera, you can kind of see that up a little bit. 
it's really noticeable in person, I, I swear. Um, it's a little sloppy. Um, I think if you edged this in black, you wouldn't notice the chips. I don't know if you could edge this in black as readily. Um, I have a feeling this is going to be some thirsty cardstock. I don't know, maybe not. What I can anticipate though is it wicking, and honestly, with the, with the backs being red, I'd maybe want to edge it in red more than black. Um, so that's a little bit unfortunate that the edges are already chipped and it's a brand new deck, but it is what it is. Let's shuffle these and see how it goes. Ooh, that's a great shuffle. I love shuffling over a bridge sized cards. They just, oh, it just is so satisfying. And this is my quirk. I tend to put a little bit more of a bend in my cards when I shuffle them. So I usually like shuffle them face up a couple ways to kind of keep them more or less flat. All right, so I've got these good and shuffled now. And as you can see, when you're just kind of fanning them out and you can see the different um, ones really easily. So if I did just want to make this a quick playing card deck, it wouldn't take me more than one pass through to just pull out anything that isn't something that you use to play with. Actually, let's just go ahead and do that right now. Should be good. Oops. Nope, that's a, a night. I oh, missed a night. So yeah, with like essentially one pass through there, I know this is fine. Um, the knights were slightly hard to see with this being the ivory. So yeah, if those were the original gray, I think that might have actually worked out a little bit better. Um, I do think that. This is a really simple deck. It probably is literally just the um, the Pam artwork where a simple aspect ratio aspect ratio squish has been done to make it fit a border fairly evenly. Um, so the cards have probably been trimmed in a little bit to make that um, cropped in a little bit because uh, Pamela Coleman Smith's originals, all the, all the images are slightly different sizes. So there's probably a crop done, probably an aspect ratio squish done to make it fit, and obviously a little bit of a treatment here so that you've got, you know, an inverse here with the, the white lettering and the black. Um, and it looks like there's probably just a layer thing where they just put a quick layer on with, you know, the suits and the playing card. So honestly... This didn't necessarily take a ton of Photoshop skill or talent or artistry to pull off. Um, and it's workable. Is it the most amazing, elegant playing card deck that I've ever seen? No. Um, the font actually really irritates me the more and more I look at this. Um, let me pull out an ace. Of course, it's going to take me forever to find an ace. There's one. All right. Um, they chose a sans serif font, uh, where typically playing cards use a serif font. You see how there's these like lines at the end of the A? That's what you're going to find in most cards. So this just feels a little off. Um, yeah. And it looks like there's a different line weight for this 10 than there is for 
these jacks or any other number. Do you see how like that nine is a lot thicker in line weight than that 10? So that makes that look slightly off. But it is a very usable deck. Um, it does look good. I think just a couple tweaks could have made it better. Oh, this is neat. Um, I thought that maybe they just did a different card stock here, but as you can see here on this night, this is a white background. And you can see that it's not just, you know, the card stock coming through. So I guess they did make a different color here over a white card stock, which is nice. All right. Um, so let's take a moment to look at the sister deck, the shadow play deck. So shadow play has these black backgrounds. So if you really like that black look, you could just swap these in with the um, divine and play majors, which is actually a really sharp look. That is not too bad. I kind of like that. All right. Um, or you could just have it be its own deck. Or if you kind of wanted um, the shadow play majors with the divine and play minors, you could flop those in too. Although with these being colored and these being black and white, it's not nearly as successful. Well, let's take a moment to look through this. <clears throat> yeah, these are upside down too. Man, I wonder if that was like a file issue or if that's something like the printer did because you would think that they would just have this oriented right side up. Whatever. Um, oh, right. I forgot to mention this. Um, there wasn't a printing issue with the shadow play where you're missing the three and four of diamonds, and it came with an extra, what is this? An extra eight and nine instead. Um, so I believe what's gonna happen is Matt Green, the creator, is going to have more threes and fours printed out and probably send them to everybody separately. Um, I really hope that isn't like killing his profit margin. Um, but yeah. that. So this is um, something different. Um, the tens are now this X, which I don't like actually. Like I'm, I was expecting, you know, Arabic numbers because there's Arabic numbers for all the rest. So when I was flipping through this, I was like, what on earth is that X? Um, looks like we're still doing it the lowercase K for night. Now it would be harder to pull the nights out because it's on, you know, the same, um, black is everything else but it still could be done because you've got the different the lowercase here i'm not a huge fan of just the black and white i have to say i know that if i was playing with this deck i would find it really annoying because you like with a regular playing card deck you've got the two colors the black and the red and that makes things a little bit easier to see in your hand um with this just all being the same color I would probably get a little bit irritated and make more mistakes and, you know, not necessarily see the tricks that I wanted to see when I was, you know, playing the game. Um, so functionally, I don't think I would ever actually use this to play with um, as far as playing cards go. Um, I can see myself using it as a reading deck though, it's, it's fine, it's super basic. The black and white is kind of neat and I've never actually seen a Pamela Coleman Smith done like this quite before. I've seen some grayscale, but I've never seen just straight up black and white. And I have to admit, I kind of enjoy that. It does make some things a little bit annoying. Ooh, that one actually looks great. Where is our oops, king of diamonds? Okay, well that's busy, but not nearly as crazy as what I thought it was going to be. Kind of the same with that. Busy, but not as crazy as I thought it was going to be. Not too terrible. 
Um, I'm not a huge fan of these majors, though. This one in particular, that sun, according to AE Weight, has to be white. To have it be a black sun, just, it's bothering me in extreme, to an extreme um, extent. Yeah, the squish is kind of irritating me, too. Look how bad it is. You got a football there for Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, I think that the black and the white is making it a little bit muddier. It It's workable, but is it ideal? No. And then, of course, with this being the BC line work, um, everything's just a little bit muddier than it should be anyway. So it's just compounding the issue, really. But overall, it gets the job done. Um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the um, Divine and Play back in order, and we'll do a quick uh, flip through a side by side on these. So, be back in just a sec. All right, so here we are with both the Shadow Deck and the Divine and Play. Um, so let's just do a quick flip through. That's everything. Um, I did notice as I was flipping through these that the miners don't have, <clears throat> um, come here miners, like this doesn't have nine spades over top of the artwork, which is nice. It probably would have made the artwork way too hard to see with what everything being black and white. Um, that is another difference I suppose I did not see before. All right, thank you so much for enjoying this walkthrough, the Divine and Play and the Shadow Play Tarot decks with me. Have a great day.